Good evening, everybody in here and out there. Um, the mic is giving a little bit of feedback, but I'm sure that'll be fine in a second. Welcome to the Afro Vice Festival 2021. Um, shifting spaces and tilting times is the theme of the festival. We're here to have a conversation with exceptional guests um, from South Africa, from Mozambique, and from Congo by way of Belgium. Um, but first, before we start, uh, the conversation will be about Afrofuturism and concepts tied into that, and I would love to introduce the director of the Afrobias Festival 2021, Jay Pather, for a small keynote speech. Jay. I, yeah, I think so, yeah. Great. I didn't do a mic check, so. <laughs> 
Thank you, uh, and uh, good evening. Good evening, everybody, and, and thank you to the Bali and, uh, of course, the AfroVibes team for this <laughs> kind invitation. Um, so when I, when I considered some of my opening remarks for this discussion, I uh, you know, could have chosen to go quite intimately with one subject or do the overview, and I chose the overview, so it's a, it's a sprinkling of ideas. Um, Shifting Spaces, Stilting Times was originally a title of a production I choreographed in 1994 when South Africa was on the brink of democracy. Nelson Mandela had just been sworn in at the, as the country's first majority black president, and the future suddenly looked a dizzying realm of all kinds of possibilities. So the title then, uh, at that time, encompassed two states of being, states of drastic inequality and despair that we were supposedly leaving behind with the end of apartheid, and looking to a shift and a tilt towards a new country, a new vision. Now, whether we shifted into a better place is arguable, since inequality and drastic poverty amongst the majority black population in South Africa remains firmly in place 27 years later. What was important in the title, though, is that it spells out a time of reckoning, not that shifts and tilts towards a better life is a happening, but that it needs to happen. And therefore, it became an appropriate theme when looking at the kind of work artists were engaging with now, that we have reached some kind of a tipping point, a point of reckoning on the African continent, in the African diaspora, and from what I can gather, of course, in the Netherlands. And so my short address considers the conditions under which Afrofuturism, shifting and tilting into future visions, has flourished. There have been many phenomena about the world in relationship to the African continent that have reached a tipping point. Colonialism and post-colonialism identified the African continent as an entity to gain from and then simply leave behind, grab the loot, kill off cultures and civilizations and leave. Decoloniality, of course, now reminds us, or in the recent past, reminds us that coloniality is an ongoing engagement with no end, with no neat end, and decoloniality asks us to consider how coloniality in terms of the economy, a globalized industry, language, cultural currency, are all invariably controlled by the West. And especially through the process of uh, the project of modernity, which identifies the West as modern and the rest of us as backward and traditional, not of this world, but stuck in the past. Decoloniality then, as a, as a, as a lens, has helped us to approach this moment as a moment of reckoning, a yearning for a sea change where the full extent of African cultural formations, whether in the past pre-colonial times or in, con in the contemporary moment, may be seen for its complexity and its sophistication. And this vindication of African cultures as a space for sophisticated evocation of future arising from a drastic present has also been an impulse in the development of Afrofuturism, of course, especially in the, in the diaspora. So decoloniality then marks a point of reckoning. What are the immediate others? Rolando Vasquez has indicated, the, the, the decolonial theorist, that the colonial project was also about the abuse and instrumentalizing not just of people, but also of land as sources of wealth. So climate, as we enter the age of the Anthropocene, has clearly demonstrated, too, a tipping point where we can no longer go back, and we are all implicated in this prolonged abuse of land. Migration, and importantly, the resurgence in the broader diaspora of Black Lives Matter as a result of the continued abnegation and violence visited on black bodies are intensities that call for change as well, for urgent shifts and tilts. The pandemic showed that we are all entangled. Harboring unused vaccines just because you're wealthy does not make the world safer since you are not safe unless we are all safe. And the pandemic has indeed taught us that. 
So here, a tipping point in the urgency with which we need to see the world as inextricably connected has flourished. So it is this speed of change, this reckoning with colonization, with coloniality, with the ongoing wars and instability and the resulting resultant migratory patterns and new colonizations of the movements of China and the United States on the subcontinent that is embodied in this title, Shifting Spaces, Tilting Times, amongst the other issues I brought up. But finally, our understanding of time ushers in a deeper sense of the place of such movements uh, in, the, in the diaspora of Afrofuturism. For artist uh, Fasta Linyakula, I'm sure some of you are familiar with his work. Um, history is a line, he writes, that runs through not a page that you can turn. He says, in the Netherlands, as in France, Belgium, etc., I hear people talking about colonialism as a black page in history. But it is not a page at all, because you can turn a page. It is not a page, but a line that runs through history, that runs through me. It is a history that has been in the making for 500 years. And as I mentioned in my opening address, he wrote, in one of the most important languages in the Congo, the Lingala, the same word lobi means both yesterday and tomorrow. It is only the context that tells you whether they are talking about the future or the past. The ancestors who came up with the word could have thought of two words, but they didn't. They chose the same word for yesterday and tomorrow. It speaks to how the un unborn are connected with the ancestors. Cultural theorist uh, Achille Mbembe has also argued that time is not a series, but an interlocking of present, past, and future that retain their depths of other pasts, presents, and futures, each age bearing, altering, and maintaining the previous ones. And in writing the world from an African metropolis, he and Sarah Nuttall write, the conceptual categories with which to account for this social upheaval, this velocity, the power of the unforeseen and of the unfolding are in need of refinement. But so too is the language with which to describe people's relentless determination to negotiate conditions of turbulence and to introduce order and predictability into their lives. And of course, this language, as we saw in the opening performance, and in many of the works on the program this year, uh, which is just a tiny representation of this kind of work, this language is first and foremost in the, in the, in the work of artists. Because these conditions, as I've sketched, as produced a language deployed by some of the world's most vivid, performance artist, searching, passionate, seemingly nihilistic, yet holding on to the imperative to give form, shape, and articulation, the works that have emerged are both sat satisfying and exuberant and promising, but also frustrating and real. In the wake of so much misinformation, invisibility, and the erasure of history, artists turn their unceasing attention to the truth of the representation using whatever forms, whatever media, to address the complexity of this moment and this change. In its place, an invitation to touch the ineffable through a mixture of unexpected disruption of narrative, deeply subjective opacity, uh, as you would have found in for example, Nora Chipamara's work uh, uh, last week, and blindingly illuminating image described by, uh, by artist uh, Faustin Linicola as a cocktail of truth and poetry. This cocktail of truth and poetry seems to lie at the heart of Afrofuturism, coined by Mark Derry in Back, Black to the Future, and widely defined as a cultural aesthetic, philosophy of science and philosophy of history, addressing themes and concerns through technoculture and speculative fiction. Poignantly, writer Yatasha Womack defines it as, and I really like this definition as a working definition, mm -hmm. <laughs> an intersection of imagination, technology, the future, and liberation. As a centrifugal force in the shifting spaces and tilting times of our continent and diaspora, Afrofuturism epitomizes them the dream of an alternate 
when you come with the Zambian artist and uh, academic wrote in a book which I edited called Acts of Transgression, goes much further and writes that Afrofuturism occupies indeed a broad aesthetic terrain known variously and contentiously as African speculative fiction, African futurism, African science fiction, Afropolitan futurism, to name a few. And she concludes that the interest here is in foregrounding ways in which Africa is imagined and might imagine itself in and into the future as strategies to radically disturb our current assumptions of what constitutes natural order and thus force our attention back onto how we live now. In conclusion then, in this moment of shifting spaces and tilting times, Afrofuturism emerges as a powerful means to foresee other realities of playing, of dreaming, of conjecture, of new imaginings, but also asks of us to be vigilant in these times of reckoning, of a desire for not just an escapist dream, not solely of the future, but a future present, a dream and a state of being that encapsulates access, power, respect, dignity, and visibility, that it takes its rightful place in the now, when in so many respects we have reached a tipping point. And this then, I hope, will be taken to the discussion forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Um, so before I invite our third guest, I would like to have a special applause for Anel Bakul <laughs> for her performance at the opening. Thank you, guys. Thank you, and welcome to the table. Thank you. Uh, and I'd like to invite Idio Chichiba. Yes. <laughs> So Jay is the director of the Afrovibes Festival. Renel is a dancer, singer, multi-talented performer. Idio is a choreographer and a performer, uh, artist, visual artist. Um, thank you very much for being here. Um, yes, uh, that's a lot of uh, a, a lot of things to think about and touch upon. Jay, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to start by um, taking it to the opening of your performance, Reynal, uh, when you started singing on the screen, the text yeah. appeared, you are becoming aware. Yes. So how, can, can you sort of, it relates, I think, to what Jay was saying in his... Uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it was coincidence, I think. Um, so the part that you saw was part of the movie I created, mm -hmm. visuals for my um, EP that I created called Closer to Truth. Um, so as you said, I'm really into this a uh, recording moment, recording of my roots, recording of my essence and who I am as an artist. So becoming, becoming aware means for me um, that I own my journey and that I actually take the time to be with myself and with my, my ancestors mm -hmm. and my um, yeah, footprint as a person. And in, in, uh, in your performance, I mean, you, you've you, you've chosen actually both music and movement. Yeah. Um, and of course visuals to, to express yourself, both live and in film. Mm -hmm. um, um, if, if I were to say that uh, your work has a feel of Afrofuturism, is that something which you can relate to or not? I think it's becoming more and more because I'm definitely telling my story through my lens as an African person, mm -hmm. so it's related, and I really love to work with different forms of um, kind of communication, and technology is one of them. So yeah, I think it makes sense, but I wasn't before. I think it's getting more and more concrete as well. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it, it does. It does. Um, of course, if any of you wants to jump in, jump in. It's a conversation, right? So it's, it always starts like, I, I start talking as a moderator, but mm -hmm. it's a conversation. Uh, 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 Idio, um, um, so uh, for you as a performer, as a physical performer, um, uh, you work with the body. Uh, Jay mentioned the, the importance and the meaning of the body in terms of, of, of a place where history resides. Um, um, what does a, a, a term because of course it's a term, it's, a, it's, it's something which somebody came up with as Afrofuturism. Uh, how does that reflect in your work? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you relate to that concept? 
Um, <laughs> I think I'll go in French. Yes, uh, I'll okay, I'll, 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 I'll translate. I, I'm yes. so sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, oui, de uh, toute façon, je... Je vois tout à fait mon travail euh, euh, à côté de, 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 de ce que Jay vient de dire. Euh, parce que euh, moi, la première chose que je, que je regarde depuis tout, toutes ces années d'expérience de, 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 de travail et toutes ces euh, difficultés ou facilités... Ou, toutes ces propositions que j'ai au, au Mozambique et aussi en, en Europe, où j'ai aussi beaucoup travaillé, en fait, euh, je vois euh, la nécessité de, de, de l'occupation de l'espace euh, mmh. dans un temps réel, enfin, euh, dans un temps présent, euh, en communication avec euh, les, deux, les, deux, les deux temps que ce soit le passé, que ce soit euh, du, qui vient en fait. Et c'est pour ça. Ah, ouais, pardon. So, so, so he was saying, um, uh, uh, yes, he, he very much recognized his work and the things he's working with in, in what Jay was saying in his opening speech. Um, uh, because both in his practice in uh, working uh, in Mozambique but also in, in Europe, he, he, he's uh, really feeling the importance of actually occupying space both in the now, in the past, and in the future. Yes. Uh, uh, C'est pour ça que uh, dans, tout, dans, tout, dans tout mon travail, toute la réflexion que je, que je fais, uh, c'est quel travail, uh, dans quel espace, quelle danse, pour quel espace, en fait. So, so the, the, the core of his reflection on his work is not just dance per se, but what dance for what space, in what space, what dance. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> Is that something that you you can you can recognize because you you're also you're both tra trained dancers? Definitely. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean for me because um, I've been trained as a contemporary and ballet dancer. Um, my mission now is really to create space for black dancers and African dancers because I felt. I think it's also related to what you said, like the abuse. Mm -hmm. I feel like when I was, for, for example, like trained and training, um, my body was not seen as it is, as it was. My mind wasn't seen and heard, uh, if, if it makes sense, as it should have been. Um, so for me, yeah, definitely like I need to take time and reflect how I can create a safe space and um, yeah, just sustainable space as well for my creations. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what did you train, uh, Idio? Ou ta carrière de danseur, tu dis que tu as travaillé en Europe et donc en Mozambique aussi. Elle a parlé de son école, de son éducation en tant que danseur. Et toi, ton parcours, il est passé comment Tout d'abord, je. Euh, c'est marrant parce que j'ai une bonne expérience en tant que footballeur. <rire> du coup, la, la, ma perception du corps des danseurs, c'est aussi euh, dans, dans mon imaginaire, quelque part. Donc, il a dit oui. Donc, une des choses, c'est qu'il a beaucoup d'expérience en tant que footballeur. And his perception of dance and the meaning of dance uh, 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 it take, is, is, is for a large part takes place in his imagination, his imaginary. So he's, he's trained his body as a, as, a, as, a, as a sportsman and dance is, is, is where his imagination uh, uh, takes place. Yes, and um, uh, of course, uh, to be a dancer, I passed for a school, uh, which my, uh, my, uh, ah, <laughs> ma, ma première ressource, ma première formation de danseur, c'est je suis un danseur traditionnel. Ok, so, so and, and uh, beyond the football training, my first uh, training and formation is as a traditional dancer in Mozambique. Uh, 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 donc, uh, uh, c'est par la perception de l'énergie. Uh, et de, du présent en fait auquel uh, 
mon travail aujourd'hui est construit, en fait. Euh, euh, je, tout de suite, je suis captivé par l'énergie du corps, par la, par la présence. Mon travail est aussi placé dans la présence du, du, du danseur, de l'interprète, du performeur, de, de l'artiste. Euh, voilà, c'est ces deux euh, liens que je que je, que je cherche dans, dans mon travail en tant que pour, pour m'entraîner, pour, pour regarder, c'est ça, c'est la présence, c'est l'énergie. Euh, et après, oui, c'est la lecture, l'esthétique corporelle que, qui vient derrière tout ça. So, so his first, uh, 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 his first actually uh, step in recognizing a perception of his dance is energy. So feeling energy, feeling place in space, and uh, the, 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 the aesthetic and the visuals come from there. They move on from there. Um, tu, tu, tu as travaillé, tout comme René, tu, tu as travaillé aussi euh, dans, dans le visuel. Tu as fait des films aussi. Uh, uh, you, wor you worked in, I'm, I'm going to translate it sound so you know what the question is. Uh, I asked him, he, uh, uh, René uh, works in audiovisual media. Uh, um, he has as well. Um, oui, by accident. <laughs> non, euh, en fait, euh, je, je, tout ce que, que, que Jay vient de dire, j'ai aussi... Euh, euh, trouve un, une place dans, dans ce que je fais parce que aussi euh, le visuel, euh, la vidéo, c'est aussi l'ouverture, la, la, euh, la rencontre de, de ma danse, de mon travail envers la technologie. Okay, so so he said everything Jay said I can recognize and relate to because in in my work and particularly my work in using film and visuals is also the meeting between my dance and my dance formation background and history and technology. Yes, um, euh, oui, donc euh, pour, pour, pour le visuel, je travaillais euh, en, 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 en coordination ou en partage d'idées avec un réalisateur. Et ce qu'on avait en commun, c'est que tous les deux, on, 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 on avait l'idée d'envahir de, de des espaces, de mettre... De, de trouver des espaces auxquels le corps peut avoir euh, euh, une autre perspective du monde. Ok. Ah. Ok. So, 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 so the, the, the work I visually I do is in co-creation with a with a film director, and and what we researched was how we could actually invade other spaces with the body and um, to, 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 to really reflect on what those spaces mean. Oui. <laughs> Donc. Euh, par là, je veux dire que euh, ces espaces sont à l'intérieur d'une du, 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 vie, d'une du, de, 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 communauté, d'une du, du, ville, que ce soit euh, une capitale assez cosmopolitaine, une capitale du monde comme Maputo est, qui a beaucoup de, 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 de mélanges, qui a beaucoup de... de, de Enfin, c'est une capitale d'aujourd'hui, en fait, Maputo. Il y a l'intérieur, il y a ces espaces auxquels nous, on, on, on vous racontait une histoire euh, de notre imaginaire, en fait, à la, à, à la rencontre de, de, de corps qui, qui ont une expérience euh, euh, pareille que la mienne, des danseurs, ou euh, une expérience des de survies. Mm -hmm. euh, dans, dans cette capitale en fait ou dans, dans la capitale du monde dans des capitales africaines du monde en fait so he said the work uh, is, is uh, often about um, uh, take, takes place in contemporary capital cities big capital like Maputo and uh, how to find spaces in these cities for the presence of bodies who carry the history that I carry and, uh, and the reflection that I have and the imagination that we have. How, how do we find ways to reflect that imagination and that experience in these big um, um, uh, technological and contemporary capital cities? Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I just find that so... Um, th th there's, there's just such a resurgence of... Uh, not a resurgence, but a big surge of um, artists on the continent really... Um, At, and we saw that in, for example, Trixie's work yesterday, where it's almost like one takes the space 
and you wait, one waits for the work to come. Um, you know, when in my time, and I think what you were referring to in terms of, the, of technique and all of that, we were, you know, we were um, brainwashed into a series of techniques that you could use. You know, this, this thing about, you know, classical ballet is the, the basic form for everything. Of course, you probably have had that as well. Um, and, and, and what happens is that when you have those kinds of technical strictures on the body, it almost obliterates and does exactly what Ngugi Wationg talks about in terms of the oral tradition on the African continent, because that was one of the first um, archives to go. You know where where songs were banned, where storytelling was banned in in various colonies during the the early colonial period, that this obliteration, this technical obliteration of the body, so that you could only you can only move in a particular way mm -hmm. according to what the the West first you know maybe has moved away from classical ballet, but then introduced a kind of a contemporary dance that then became the classical way of doing things and then you had the you know the release technique and you know and then it came came up with more and more techniques and then all those forays into Africa where there was a particular way of moving in the body that um, that that looked like you know that you would be sitting in the middle of Switzerland, right, <laughs> or in the middle of 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 of, uh, of Belgium, and and watching any other other uh, other dance company. But I find it really fascinating, and what you you're saying in terms of moving into a particular space and waiting for the work to come through the body, that this this accessing what it in itself comes is able to make. Through not just those those that preponderance of technique, but a range of other techniques, whether it's a technique of recall, a technique of prayer, a technique of spirituality, a technique of sense, you know, it's referencing so much else beyond that narrow definition of what it takes to be a performer. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, in, say, in adding to what you're saying. Um, the idea of a of, of a of a, 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 a history an archive or always which is destroyed, um, I think it's no accident that Afrofuturism actually comes out of uh, out of out of music in the diaspora. So it's people like Sun Ra and George Clinton who first formulated and because they have the if there is a reservoir for for history from the continent in in the diaspora, that reservoir is actually the music, is the rhythm, the music, and the dances that are associated to it. So that would be the place where finding a way back to, to histories and to, um, to, to being mm -hmm. would pass through those music. So I, th I think it's definitely not, a, not, a, not an accident that in, that in, in, in the music from the diaspora, even in people like, the, like Lee Scratch Perry, or um, they actually, redefined a future in order to rewrite a past which was taken, which was stolen, and which was now being recreated in the musical. Uh, um, you, 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 you've, you've worked both in the classical, um, you live in Europe, mm -hmm. um, you, you, you make music based on, not based on, but which, which fits more or less in, a, in, in, in the R&B uh, uh, electronic mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. um, how is your music is essential in, in redefining who you are in terms of, of a performer? Hmm, that's a very good question. I think for me, um, it also comes to comes back to um, who I am as a person. So I'm very intuitive. I don't really like to shape and anticipate my, impu my impuls impulsiveness. I really like to um, just express and write and also like hear things that make sense regarding, regarding to what I'm, on which frequencies I am on. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. um, people usually say, yeah, you kind of, you know, you have this 70s kind of sound, 80s sound. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah, because also like the sound from the 70s talk about liberation. And I'm really into, because of the, this reckoning, I need to create this vibration of liberation and um, owning your power and owning your vulnerability. 
that's what my music is about, sound-wise as well. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes complete sense. Okay. Mm. It makes complete sense. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, um, uh, uh, Jay, you, you mentioned you know, the title, the, the first is a piece you did in 1994, so that indeed, it, that's a while ago. <laughs> um, um, how has the shifting and the tilting evolved since then? I mean, you, you, you moved your space of work from not just in South Africa, but now the entire continent plus Europe uh, um, with this festival. How for you as, a, as, a, as, as an artist and as a curator has the shifting and the, and the, and the tilting um, evolved? Oh, well, <laughs> it's, um, um, I think, um, yeah, I'm just going to borrow your, your word, your intuitive word, you know, it was, it was, it's largely intuitive because or counterintuitive because you, you know, you, I, I, I trained um, all the way through the 80s in, you know, in very, very solid specific techniques that came from the West. Um, I trained, you know, started off as an actor and then moved into choreography and dance. And so, so it, it became a process of unlearning, you know, it really became a process of trying to to drop that imperative to to represent mm -hmm. um and it's so hard i mean for for my generation anyway uh it's very hard not to represent because mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's 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 inimical to one to be able to talk through a whole bunch of filters but when i see your work and when i see your work and i see so so many exciting young, and I, again, I go back to Nora Chipamara's um, uh, Nihanda, which I think typifies that refusal to represent. It just gives me so much joy <laughs> over the years. And I think it's a process of joy making that has, has fed my intuition that we, we, we are artists more and more from the continent and the diaspora are refusing to um, to translate to to translate to the West what it is, and to to be opaque and to not for the sake of being opaque, but to draw from other languages, and that for me has been a big shift and a big learning curve for myself, um, not to 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 be um, to, to to invite my my joy. Um, uh, at and, and the release of watching uh, young performers, uh, young and uh, you know emerging art uh, art forms on the from the continent, um, refusing to to be nice, <laughs> you know, and to be interpretable, uh, which we were really really stuck in for a for, for for a while, and until you really came to grips with the violence of the. The, modern, uh, the modernity, you know, of, of turning us into uh, represent, r representing beings, that we represented parts of, we represented rather than who we were, and how you stay with this conglomerate of influences, which is both, you know, as I said, both technique, but also your, your spirit your society, your, your sentience, your sense of relationality with your environment and with each other and your communities, you know, and how, how that impacts. Um, yeah, that's so, so that, that, you know, in a, in a, for, on one line, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that shift and tilt has been, has been quite remarkable to, 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 to be able to curate artists who are taking, take that plunge and take that risk. And I, hope that we are able to care for that enough for that to really mushroom so that we can see the, the, that combination of truth and poetry that Faustin Lignicola comes out without the need to explain to the world what the hell we are doing mm -hmm. um, and, and, and to, to, to thereby contribute to the, you know, to, uh, and to co continue to contribute without um, having to explain ourselves. C'est euh, juste un petit commentaire mm -hmm. euh, parce que l'entendre euh, parler euh, de, ses, de ses inclinations et le, le changement d'espace et de temps, en fait, ça me fait aussi revenir 
euh, quand euh, le moment de la rupture entre le danseur euh, traditionnel mm -hmm. et le, le danseur que je voulais être aujourd'hui, en fait. Mm -hmm. Ça me fait penser à ça parce que, euh, pareil, euh, à, à, à toutes, toutes les enseignements de la danse, la danse traditionnelle aussi, elle est, elle est technique, elle est faite de, de répertoires, mm -hmm. des représentations, enfin, elle est, elle, est, elle est riche en en tout ce qu'il y a dans l'apprentissage de la danse. Mmh. Et en fait, au moment où je décidais de quitter, c'est parce que je voulais avoir euh, 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 mon propre euh, euh, savoir, d'apprendre pour moi-même ce que c'est la danse, en fait, mmh. de, 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 de passer au-delà de cette compréhension de la danse d'autres qui la danse traditionnelle ou ma formation en tant que danseur. Mmh. Et quand il dit ça, euh, aujourd'hui, quand je regarde, c'est pour ça que je, je voulais faire cette commentaire, quand je regarde ce qui était en fait cette danse traditionnelle, je vois en fait que si je n'avais pas, si pas passé par, par elle, je ne saurais pas ce que je suis aujourd'hui. Mmh. Je ne saurais pas cette danseur sponta spontanée, improvisateur que je mmh. suis aujourd'hui, avec cette vision d'espace. Euh, avec cette, cette, cette euh, 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 étirement de, de l'imaginaire, en fait. Mm -hmm. Parce que toute la danse traditionnelle, vous savez, c'est mm -hmm. aussi tout, tout un travail d'imaginaire de, 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 de couper, tant que tu n'as pas vraiment les outils pour couper, c'est juste des représentations. Et voilà. So, so I, so I, I, I hope I can... <laughs> But uh, no, no, he, he, he said, I, I want to react directly to what Jay is saying because I recognize so much of what he's saying in terms of, of, of shifting spaces and tilting times. Because um, uh, I come from also from the traditional dance, which also is a training. There's a, there, there's a theory, there's, 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 there's a, a very strong base. And um, um, I had to make also, I made a choice to go from that to dancing from, from my own personal knowledge, my own personal vision. At the same time, I realized that um, because I had that extensive training in traditional dance, I was actually able to formulate the, the wish to work f for, from my own imagination and my own feeling, my own spiritual talent, my, my own uh, spiritual search as, as, as a dancer and as a creator. Um, no, but yeah. it, it was just a, uh, uh, because he talked, I didn't want to, yeah. to keep it for me, so. And, and um, uh, um, so you talked about the dance, the movement. Um, I, I've seen different things, uh, also some of the films you've, you've put online. Um, uh, I talked about the music that, that Renel uses, the music that you, uh, you like to work with. Can you say something about that? Ah, yes. Um, I, I, I really like to, to, to work on this kind of um, uh, uh, ambient, um, ambiental music. Mm -hmm. which is a lot of uh, santé bringing uh, this idea of uh, opening or occupy the, occupying oh uh, cette idée de 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 occupation d'espace en fait parce que j'ai toujours cette idée planant de de la musique et cette idée de la duration en fait de la durée de la de la durée du 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 du, du temps j'aime bien aussi de travailler par la musique le temps Donner la sensation de temps. So he, he, he likes working with ambient electronic music because he likes working actually with the feeling, the sense of time and be able to stretch time out and use, uh, use the word planant, which means like, yeah, like you're floating, like you're gliding. Yeah. Uh, 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 C'est pour ça que la plupart du temps, dans, dans, dans des travaux que je fais, il y a toujours de la musique aussi uh, 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 live. Je travaille avec des de, de, de musiciens live. Euh, c'est là, c'est le premier travail que j'ai fait, euh, mais aussi avec cette idée de euh, 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 cette idée de d'extension, de, de, du, 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 de vraiment pousser à, à, à comment, je, comment je peux dire à l'état angustieux de, 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 du lumin en fait. À l'état angustieux, euh, angustieux. Euh, anxieux là. Le, 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 le oui, euh, oui. On f... ah, je ne sais pas comment expliquer ça, mais de, de, de cette idée de tirer, de tirer vraiment le temps pour donner euh, une sensation autre au, 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 à, à l'être humain, en fait. Okay. So, 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 actually, so, uh, uh, electronic music, but, but, but live, preferably, and 
to really work with time and to, 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 to stretch time out in order to be able to redefine actually what, 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 what being human is. Yeah. That's <laughs> which sounds really, really futuristic, actually. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah. And, and you've worked in spaces, you, um, you choose urban spaces also to work in. You mentioned uh, looking for spaces, dance and space in dance. Um, yes, uh, you, I saw you passing a movie. Uh, a movie that we, uh, on, on a passé le film, mm. un film qu'on a fait dans une décharge au Mozambique. Euh, en fait, c'est aussi, euh, c'était un, un, un film qu'on a pris quatre ans pour le faire parce que c'était l'espace qui nous intéressait. Okay, so, it, so uh, some of the images here from a film that he made in a in a uh, décharge, which is a, a, a huge trash uh, uh, um, landfill. In Mozambique, it took him four years to actually be able to make that film, but he knew he wanted to work in that space. Euh, oui, parce qu'en en fait, euh, par l'espace, il y avait plein d'histoires, en fait, euh, parce que c'était une décharge. Et dans cette décharge, euh, on, 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 on a travaillé, on a vu qu'il y a beaucoup d'intimité euh, qui révèle ce qui, qui, ce qui sont les gens, en fait. Et ça révèle aussi euh, le... Le, le, le passé d'un espace, d'un objet, et c'est que ça va devenir par rapport euh, à la ré réutilisation de ces objets, peut-être. Ok, donc so, c'est so aussi une réflexion, parce qu'il y a beaucoup de histoires dans cet espace, et c'était aussi une façon de rechercher both le passé, of, of, of both, both histories and, his, and history uh, in that space and what it could mean in the future in terms of either recycling or reusing elements from the past in the future. Mm. Mm. I'm also thinking, I'm just like, that's, yeah. very, that's very powerful. Yeah. I was like, that's beautiful, yeah, to just, um, in a way it could be very intrusive, you know, to just, acknowledging people's la présence, people's presence in that space, but then to actually respect the space but add your presence to it is very powerful, I feel. And yeah, the correlation between the past and the future and the present is very beautiful and poetic, so, mm. yeah. yeah. Uh, which kind of ties into the concept uh, Faustin was talking about, uh, you mentioned the, the yesterday and tomorrow is mm. the same, the same word yeah. and the same side to the, yeah. to the... It's also, you know, it, it leaves us with um, quite a kind of a, a strong sense of um, political power and will mm. and taking it away from the structures that have, uh, have neatly categorized our time, so that, you know, you know, in the West, we know there is a strong sense of uh, a need to forget the past. <laughs> mm -hmm. the West, the, you know, the, the former colonies are very, <clears throat> mm -hmm. are very excited about forgetting the past. Um, and uh, for, for very good reason, it was a terrible, brutal past. And, um, <clears throat> but when you, when you, when you categorize like that, and of course, you know, we, we have a whole philosophy in Western, I mean, you know, I don't want to bring it down to a few words, but, you know, we have a whole philosophy of existentialism mm. in, uh, in the West and Jean-Paul Sartre and all of that who spoke, you know, brought in this ahistorical notion of time that we are, you know, just who we are right now is all, all there is. There isn't mm -hmm. anything else, which is pretty depressing. But anyway, <laughs> it, it uh, you know, it, it ushered in a great many decades of depression, I think, in, 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 in the West, in this, in this need to, to cut ties with the, with, with the past for whatever reason. But I think this revisiting, this interweaving of, of, of time, uh, is a is a really profound moment for for in the in in the in the in the in the move towards any kind of 
liberation, and especially in the healing of the psyche uh, and, the, uh, and the, the healing of trauma, um, the, the revisiting, but the revisiting with fluidity and not in the way that truth commissions and all of that try to do, uh, which is, you know, like we had a Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa, which wasn't very successful because on, on many respects it was like, you know, we'll, you know, here was the bad person, here was the good person, and we did bad and sh shame, and we'll hug, and everything will be fine. And no one talks about reparations, uh, which I think in many respects refers to an ongoing, the, you know, the ongoing dialogue about time. And when we, when we understand that this, this continuity, and especially the psychic, the psychic mm. um, trauma and the, and, um, the, the residue that's in people's bodies, that's in our bodies, um, we, we, we are only scratching, you know, we're only beginning to scratch the surface. But I think understanding that through time is a way of both claiming power, but revisiting trauma and coming back uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that is fluid and, uh, uh, and probably, and, and that's where I think aspects of Afrofuturism come in because they, they, they take that space and they, you know, it's blown up into, into another world. Mm -hmm. So you, for, for a moment, it's not just escapism, but it's being able to create a malleable space so we're not stuck in the trauma because I don't think anybody wants to be necessarily stuck in that past because it was no. a terrible past. But it is, it is identifiable in our bodies and in our actions as we go forward. And so this, this way of maneuvering in and out of it is a language that artists bring to the table which is extremely profound. And especially the way artists like both of you connect to, you know, in, I'm using the word spirit, but of course it means different things to different people. But the way it connects to to um, to to the presence of other beings, uh, whether it is in memory, you know, in a in a very kind of a rational way, or whether it is in a in in, in a more present presence of somebody of an ancestor, or mm -hmm. and and that those presences and that kind of that kind of complexity and fluidity is becoming more and more present, I think, in, in many artists. And I think in South Africa, anyway, there are also many artists who are refusing to even take the name artist and choosing to call themselves healers or, I mean, diviners, mm -hmm. uh, uh, rather than this, this, this nomenclature of the artist, which is, again, a way of identifying and boxing us in specific time periods and also boxing what it is we do and where we do it and um, what its uh, effect might be. And I think that, that kind of opening up of these, these, these constricting um, uh, boundaries um, is, is uh, yeah, I, I, I think is, is, is a really, really, it's, it's also a way of connecting with what, what has been lost. Yeah, it, it's, um, I mean, it, it, it's about healing, it's about very complex things. It's also about, about joy, in a way. I, I, uh, George Clinton comes to mind, who in his live in concerts with, with the Parliament Funkadelic actually would come in a spaceship on the stage and would be saying, you know, I've come to re reclaim the pyramids. So actually literally coming from outer space to reclaim history and then, uh, and, and then yeah, and then have, throw a huge funk party to celebrate the reclaiming of, uh, of, of a history. Mm -hmm. um, mm. um, yeah, yeah. P-Funk. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, and, and, and of course, and, and Sun Ra, who as well, so just said, well, I don't, I don't abide by the rules of this planet because it's not my planet. Mm -hmm. and, but at the same time, who, who picked up all different elements from the, those elements that he knew from, from, from history of the continent and, and reworked them, reinterpreted them, and um, gave them a form um, which was purely his. Mm. But at the same time, everybody's, and at the same time, a joyful form, celebrating, mm. actually. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, we are actually, I'm looking at the clock, and it's ticking, and it's, I think, exactly five seconds before we're supposed to close the conversation. So, but I'm not going to close it yet, because I want to ask each one of you if you have something you still want to say or add um, to today's conversation.
is really can i answer i think that's a very good um question and i really understand what you just said but i think that sometimes we cannot claim from the oppressor is healing and that's something that i really understood is really to actually find this healing into communities and find your tribe in this western continent and western spaces um, where you can share your experience and find tools and real support and genuine exchange. Yeah, to just heal and heal with your community and your people, especially in the art, art scene. But there is also, uh, if I can just also say that there, you know, th there are enough artists, and I. I'm going back to Nora's work in Meander, which is profoundly angry and anger and rage mm -hmm. as um, as a form of healing, um, actually. Because and the the healing I think that many of the artists are talking about as well is not a kind of a touchy feely, let's hold hands and sing Kumbaya, mm -hmm. my lord. Uh, you know, it's it's um, it's also tied up with 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 rage and tied up with strategies for talking directly these are strategies for refusal uh, uh, to 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 behave to 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 normalize the trauma so i i while i, I you know I, I think i think and so you know i just want to to say that uh, you, I, I, I hope we are not giving the impression that you know, the, the response to the colonial project by artists is simply, okay, let's all just heal ourselves. Because I think that there, you know, it, it takes different forms. This is a particular panel on Afrofuturism, which, which talks to issues of dream and talks to issues of imagination. But I mean, of course, if we had another theme around um, uh, uh, theater or I mean performance in the African continent and on the diaspora around um, you know revenge killings <laughs> there there will be enough artists who are uh, who talk to that you know who there are enough artists who uh, you know Fasnali Nicola is another artist who is uncompromising mm -hmm. in his critique of the lack of uh, reparations for example no one you know that the the, the, the lack of give back but I, I must, sorry, go back to what you were saying, that ultimately, though, when it comes to the healing, it's, it's almost impossible to wait for it to come from the outside because it's not going to. Mm -hmm. And the, the years have proven that and have shown that, not on the scale that it needs to happen. And, and you know, African people can't, can't wait for the, for the world to change its mind and understand what uh, what what happened and acknowledge it sufficiently to to institute the healing so absolutely and that is why it's not not for want of trying but that is why artists feel they they take it on themselves and find every single means to do it yeah, yeah um, and um, the power of the imagination, actually, to transform the real mm. 
Mm -hmm. um, I think that's at the heart of what Afrofuturism is. And I think also that's at the heart of what uh, artists uh, in their mission, and especially the way you, you work and, and you uh, are. It's using the imagination to transform the real and to, um, to move beyond and to actually really shift spaces and, um, uh, and, 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 and tilt our times. So I'm, I'll, I'll close on that note. Thank you very much. Thank you for your reaction. Thank you very much, all of you. Um, I'd like an applause for Jay, <laughs> Renel, and Idio. Um, this was Afro Vibes 2021 at the Bali. Thank you.